accept that Sergi Brazil liaison office organized a prescription glasses distribution in Cotia, Sao Paulo. Sergi volunteers in Ponting, Malaysia, canvassed donations on behalf of residents affected by last year's floods. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Helen Nell. Thank you for joining us. In Brazil, the local Tzuji Liaison Office held a prescription glasses distribution in Kotia to help 50 people see clearly once more. Many residents were also inspired to adopt a bamboo coin bank to continue the circle of love. Putting on his new prescription glasses, the senior can finally see clearly. Members at Tijis Brazil Liaison Office are in Cotia to distribute prescription glasses to 50 residents. I shall pray to Jesus for your blessings. May your charity continue to prosper and reach out to more areas to bring about peace, unity and harmony in communities. This is also a great opportunity to inspire compassion in people. Our ophthalmologist has already seen 52 patients, and he is almost 70 years old. This is no easy feat. Typically, an ophthalmologist sees no more than 20 patients a day. With bamboo coin banks in hand, volunteers are all present to share their love to help those in need. Because I cannot afford such a nice pair of glasses. Since I have benefited, it is only right that I reciprocate, so I am adopting a coin bank to help others. Many present decided to adopt a coin bank, including children, for acts of charity are not exclusive to the wealthy. In Malaysia, Tzuji continues the assembly at pre units for flood survivors in Manik Urai Kelantan with the help of cash work participants. Though part some participants have had experience in construction, they found out that building a pre wasn't easy as they thought. Here's more. <laughs> In Kelatan, working on the construction of the prefab units for flood survivors, workers make sure each home is done right. Among them is city volunteer Wang Yongshi, who is helping to supervise the project. It's getting better and better, but we're still learning. Among the Castro work participants is Zanel Abedin. Though he has had previous experience in construction, he had to learn from square one just like everyone else when starting out. We need to attend the course first to make sure the details of the assembly process are done right. Although I have experience in building homes, the prefabs are new to me. If I had not attended the lessons, I wouldn't know how the units could be assembled. Step by step, volunteers make sure each prefab is built to perfection. It's leveled. When it's leveled, the assembly process will be smoother and the outcome better. Seeing the local residents' dedication to the construction, Wang is deeply moved. When I asked them if they had slept, they replied they can sleep during the day, as it's not too hot. Helping Manak Urai residents recover from the massive flooding, both city volunteers and local residents look forward to a brighter future, one where love is the common language. Among the recent controversies surrounding the Tzuji Foundation, one is the building materials used to construct the Jingzi holes. Many believe that the holes are designed with high-end construction materials. However, the truth is, all Jingzi holes were built to be sturdy and strong, but also environmentally friendly. Walking into the Jingzi hole, one can feel a sense of peace and calmness. The Jingzi hole and its surroundings make me feel at ease. I feel a sense of stillness when I walk into the Jingzi hall. The building is very simple and unadorned. Without extravagant decoration and coloring, the Jingzi hole is built with sturdy and eco-friendly materials both inside and out. The Jingzi hall is designed with dual pitch roofs and covered with tiles. The exterior walls, on the other hand, are covered with pebbles. Knowing that wood can last for centuries and is also environmentally friendly, a significant amount of wood is incorporated into the building.
If you maintain a wooden construction regularly, it can last hundreds of years. The use of wood can be seen in a lot of historical architecture. Besides using green materials, the space inside the venue is also designed to reduce energy consumption. All the compartments are built using calcium silicate boards or cement fiber boards that are recognized by the green building material labeling system. The building is structured with large windows to improve ventilation and allow natural light to substitute as interior lighting. The balcony is made to prevent direct contact with the sunlight and reduce energy consumption. By making full use of natural resources, the Jingzi Hall remains at a suitable temperature even without AC. To beautify the Jingzi Hall while make sure excessive rainwater is put to good use, custom-made water collectors can be seen throughout the building. Whenever it rains, the rainwater from the roof of the third floor will flow to the second floor. All the rainwater is collected and used to water flowers and trees. To lessen the burden on the planet, the Jingzi Hall avoids using concrete pavement to allow the earth to breathe. The Jingzi Hall is surrounded by a lush green field and paved with interlocking bricks. These bricks make sure excessive rainwater can pass through. Using water-efficient faucets, dual flush toilets, and energy-saving light bulbs, the Jingzi Hall makes sure no resources are being wasted. The Jinsi Hall is not only a gathering place for Zi volunteers, but also serves as a cultivation ground. The solemn building is sturdy and environmentally friendly too. As the Jinsi Hall is sturdy enough to withstand strong wind and rain whenever a natural disaster strikes, it can also be used as an emergency shelter. As the recycling industry expands in Taiwan, the focus now has turned to more eco-friendly processing techniques and even providing feedback to manufacturers so they may come up with products that either use these reclaimed materials or are easier to be taken apart to be reclaimed. Here's our fourth report on urban mining. The SIM cards found on any type of smart cards have a thin gold coating. Perhaps from one ton of this, we can harness 300 to 500 grams of gold. And already that would be more than efficient than mining. More and more people are now aware that garbage can really be turned into gold. So just how should urban mining evolve? The first is more eco-friendly processing. Traditionally, King's water is used to melt the whole thing down. So there will also be a lot of copper and nickel in the solution. Though cyanide can help remove the gold, it is highly toxic, and if proper safety measures are not followed, operators can easily get poisoned. In this bath, by heating and passing the gold through a light current, soon the gold color turns silverish. This method uses a neutral solution and does not require the change of solution. This is gold mud, which we have successfully separated. By drying the mud, we can then melt it to refine the gold. This company focuses on eco-friendly metal reclamation techniques and has won recognitions internationally. Every metal has its own reduction potential. By creating an environment most suitable for gold's reduction, it will naturally be separated. There are also academic institutions focused on such research. In Taiwan, steel refining creates some 160,000 tons of dust a year, which contains 64,000 tons of coarse zinc oxide. In zinc mines, the typical concentration in ores is about 30%, which is already good enough for refining. But 30% of this residual dust is zinc as well. As such residual dust comes from industrial waste, it is also full of impurities. Traditionally, washing the dust with acidic chemical solution would be used to reclaim the metal, but here they have found an easier way. Because it's industrial waste, it also contains chlorate, and through scrubbing, we force the particles to rub against each other to remove the chlorate. Next, we will apply magnetic separation to remove the ferrite. This way, the zinc concentration will be increased.
Take scrubbing, for example. In mineral processing, it is a common technique, but it has never been used on treating waste. Thus, taking a cross-disciplinary approach is very important. Combining the specialties of various professions can help improve the efficiency of urban mining. Another direction to take is purity at the source. As we go about recycling the appliances, we can provide our parent companies with feedback on designs and such. As Xie's company was founded by several major consumer electronics manufacturers in Taiwan, his job includes providing feedback to the parent companies, so products could be more environmentally friendly right when they are designed. The best way is for them to use the reclaimed materials during manufacturing or apply designs to make recycling easier. Currently, some recycling businesses have expanded abroad due to the limited amount of recyclables in the country. But through such expansions, they can also share ways to help safeguard the planet with more people. Months after one of the worst floods swept across Malaysia in December last year, the quest to aid those affected continues. This time, city volunteers in Pontian hit the streets and traditional markets to canvas for donations. A kind-hearted bistro owner even donated his profits for one day to Tzu to help the flood victims. Whether it is at the traditional market, We're just doing what we can. This is something we can do. Or along storefronts. So, Cindy is just want to help people, ah. From sunrise to sunset, city volunteers can be seen canvassing for donations for the December flood victims. The love and kindness of members of the public is transpiring everywhere, including this restaurant. Plate after plate of tasty and appealing food makes its way out of the kitchen. In a quest to help the flood victims, the bistro owner decided to donate their profit for the day to Tijin. We are very privileged to have the opportunity to organize this charity fundraiser to help the flood victims. All of us hope to help restore normalcy to their lives. Although it has been more than two months since the waters have receded, the love and camaraderie of the Malaysian people continues to flourish throughout the country. City volunteers in Taoyuan, Taiwan pay monthly visits to their care recipients to bring their love to families in need, meanwhile to help students build up their self-confidence and improve their interpersonal skills. Students and teachers at the Tsushou class in Zhongli organize a charity sale at the flea market. Through the event, students learn about accountability as well as the importance of cherishing our resources. <laughs> To teach students about accountability and how to be more independent, teachers of the Zhongli Tsushou class started the new term by organizing a charity sale at the flea market. The flea market provides a great platform for us to convey the message of recycling and how we can extend an item's life cycle. The proceeds from our charity fundraiser will be used to help those in need. This is a great event that allows us to practice charity and cultivate our humanitarianism. For students, organizing a charity sale is no easy feat. However, class moms and teachers guided them throughout the entire process in the hope that this experience may help them develop strong interpersonal skills. Guava, we're selling guavas. 
delicious guavas for sale. I don't take part in these events very often, so it's very refreshing for me. Honestly, I finally understand the laborious nature of a night market vendor's job. You gain immense happiness through interacting with customers. We're really grateful that they purchased so many items for the sake of helping others in need. At the end of the event, volunteers also invited a special guest, filmmaker Wu Yifeng, to share stories of mentally disabled people whose courage helped them rise above adversity. I've played my documentaries in churches, for various charity organizations and schools. This is the first time I'm showing my documentary for Ziji. But I hope there will be more opportunities like this in the future. All religions have a common denominator, and that is love. Realizing how blessed and fortunate they are after witnessing the suffering of others, these students go home with gratitude in their hearts, more determined to help others in need. In the past, not a day went by where Zhang Xiaomei did not drink or chew betel nut. What about now? City volunteers in Taoyuan have once again mobilized to conduct their monthly outreach. The single mother from China has to single-handedly raise her daughter who suffers from multiple disabilities. Volunteers encourage the young girl to write down Jinx's aphorisms as part of her rehabilitation. All the best, you will get better and better, all right? Bless you. This Thai couple's son was born with multiple disabilities. After the home visitations, volunteers concluded the evening with a group sharing, hoping to further strengthen everyone's resolve and determination. In Hong Kong, a group of students from prestigious university visited the local Jingzi Hall to learn more about Ziji and its practices. Due to the recent criticism the charity has received in Taiwan, this group of students did not hold back on their questions. In the end, however, the students were glad to have heard from the volunteers themselves. But first, in Taiwan, a group of visitors from Myanmar stopped by Ziji's humanitarian center. Among the guests were the superintendent of Myodo Medical Center, who came to Taiwan to sign a contract with the Taipei City Hospital in hopes of future collaboration. Visiting Dai TV, this group of visitors from Myanmar is filled with awe and wonder. Among the guests is Maidol Medical Center's superintendent, Nei Lin, who is here about signing a contract with the Taipei City Hospital. We need medical assistance in Myanmar. All doctors and nurses need more training. We hope to gain support from Taiwan, like doctors going to medically deprived areas in Myanmar to help our citizens. Entering the new studio, the visitors get a behind-the-scenes experience of Dai TV. But actually, Myanmar has known about Siji since 2008. In 2008, when Myanmar was hit with a cyclone, many Siji volunteers came to our country to help us. When we heard that Siji Foundation was coming to our rescue, we were really happy. Siji's bond with Miramar has helped the volunteers connect to Maidal Medical Center with Siji Hospital, a partnership sure to benefit many more people in need. 
Meanwhile, a group of students from Hong Kong Baptist University, a school known for strong Christian values and academic excellence in science and math, is visiting the local Jing Si Hall. During the Q&A segment of the visit, the HKBU students asked several hard questions. First, they inquired how Tsuji uses the funds donated by the public. Upon learning that donations are spent in accordance to the private donor's request, one student had this to say. Tsuji doesn't just give money away to the poor. They make sure those that receive the money are really in need. This is something they carefully hand out, whether it's for long-term financial support or short-term emergency response. I'm really impressed with this Buddhist organization and their ideals. Another student saw the truth for herself. I went to the bathroom earlier and saw that every volunteer takes turns cleaning the toilets. In this way, they save money on a cleaning person. I saw how the organization grew from one Dharma master to a charity organization with chapters in different countries. I also saw how in various natural disasters, they help disaster survivors with emergency relief. This is something that I find admirable, as this assistance to the survivors is probably the thing they need the most at the time. Learning that compassion for human beings is not bound by race, faith, or creed, these students take home lessons to last them a lifetime. In Taiwan, 50 recycling coordinators from Da'an, Zhongzhen, Zhongshan, Wanghua, and Datong districts have pulled together to share their insights on conservation with each other in order to promote such knowledge to more families. Let's not join them. In Taipei, Taiwan, Northern District Recycling Coordinators come together to exchange their ideas on how best to promote recycling at a Chiji Wolong recycling station. The philosophy of Chiji's recycling mission is to make the planet a better place, right? By sharing Chiji's recycling concepts, senior volunteers hope everyone can safeguard the planet with love and pass on the idea of environmentalism to the public. We should let the public know that recyclables need to be rinsed before they can be categorized in the right section, and teach them which ones can be recycled and which ones cannot. When people bring unsorted recyclables, instead of accepting them, it is our duty to educate them on the right way of recycling. We are not just sorting recyclables at the station. Instead, we should teach the public on different ways of keeping our planet clean and our souls pure. If we fail to come here, we would not have the chance to learn from others' experience. This is a meaningful gathering. Recycling volunteers not only recycle in their daily lives, but also share their recycling knowledge and experience with the community. We go to Hubei, China at the end of the show, where city volunteers in Wuhan organize a seminar on environmental protection. Besides teaching members of the public how to sort their recyclables correctly, the volunteers also explain why going meatless is good for both the body and the planet. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.